Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly Posca Paint Party. We're so happy you are here. And um, hey, I wanted to ask you all to put your name in the chat and say where you're from, because I think we have some new people on today. Great. Yeah. And let's tell them what we're going to do today. So yeah, uh, today we're going to be working in grayscale. So I don't know how many of you saw the little time-lapse sketch that I did, but this is a great exercise for everyone. Uh, it kind of lets go of having to think about color and you're just worried about black, gray, and white. And what's neat about this is you learn a lot about contrast and highlights. So you want to get dark, dark, darks to black and white, white, whites. And um, it's just a really fun exercise. And I'm going to show you uh, how I do this and how it helps me, um, you know, do other paintings with color later. And um, so anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun and um, we'll get started in just a sec. Yeah. And just so you know, this is really interactive. So we do want to see what you're working on as we get halfway through the hour. And as always, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Yeah. And I'm going to go hide away. Oh, one last thing. Yep. Somebody is going to win a box of Posca paint pens today. And we will announce that after the paint party today. Yeah. And I want to apologize for last week uh, having to cancel the paint party. You know, I was just exhausted from working and um, I just didn't think I was going to do a good job. So I uh, uh, j just decided to focus on this week. So this is great. So uh, this little painting I did, a little eight by 10 and just black, gray, and white. And so, you know, I've done lots of these over the years and, and this started out from doing surfboards where I had clients that were a little more reserved and they didn't want all this color on their board, but we could still do something really cool in grayscale uh, to add some neat uh, design to their board. It also, you can add, you can make it kind of look like a more of a silver effect and um, sometimes even a chrome effect with a little blue. Um, but anyway, so we're going to start out doing this. And what you notice about this, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it, but it allows you to get a lot of detail with like, you know, these palm trees and, you know, focused in on how to make things pop. You know, I can't make that whole sky gray or black and then ha have the palm trees pop. So you just play with different contrasts so that you're able to, you know, make these things pop out, make the little guy pop out. And, you know, I decided to do this moon with a little crescent to it. And uh, that turned out pretty good. So um, the pens that we're gonna need today are gonna be white, black, and if you have gray, that's great. If you just had black and white, that's fine. And a lot of people also, you know, when I do black line drawings, I use mainly just black and white. And I can go back and forth and tighten up lines. So this is great for black line drawings. And if you get the smaller pen, so if you have the little, uh, the three or the one MR, you know, you can do little dot patterns and little cross hatching patterns that really add a lot to your piece. And uh, especially this little one MR, um, I really like this for doing little black line drawings. It's super clean and you can get nice dot patterns, stipple effects and nice uh, little cross hatching effects. So with that being said, uh, let's get started. Get my glasses on. Um, I'm glad that we have a bunch of people here. And for those of you who have never uh, been a part of the paint party, feel free to ask any questions that you want. And um, we'll answer those in the chat. And uh, Maria will ask them. And then about 30 minutes in, we'll start sharing and show all this kind of stuff. All right. So let's switch to this other uh, overhead camera. And there we go. As are you most of the camera? No, this is normal. All right. So we kind of have a new little camera set up today. We wanted to get it a little closer and um, seems like it's working okay. We are seem, seeing that Zoom's a little slow today. So I apologize if it seems a little slow. But, you know, when we're doing the blends, just like with uh, color blending, it's gonna be the same effect. We're gonna go black, gray to white. We always start with the darkest color first and then blend it with the middle color and then finish it up with the lighter color. So I have like a little sketch here. Uh, 
that I was doing. And I'm going to start from the middle. I have like this skull guy going. And let me just out, maybe outline this in gray so that you can see it. Um, I always draw really loose so that it's just my map. And, you know, this is where all the fun stuff comes in. When, you, when you're able to do like a really cool, fun drawing, it really allows you to um, come up with something a little, a little more interesting and creative because uh, you're not trying so hard. I tell people, try not to try so hard and try to loosen up and just kind of flow with it. So you can see my little skull guy. Let's push this up. Let me just get this outline so that you guys can see the sketch and where I'm starting. All right. Now I have a rose over here too that I'm going to be doing. So no matter what you paint, you can paint anything you want. I'm basically just going to be showing you this little grayscale and how it and how it can really turn out cool. Here, your very the very bottom of your sketch is a little cut off from the camera. Yeah, I'll push it up. There we go. All right. So, like, like I was saying with the little map of the the painting, uh, when you do this sketch in this little map, these are just little spots. And for those of you who haven't done this, um, what I do is I break these little spots up in the little areas, and I just focus one at a time. So I am going to focus uh, probably on this rose first. And I'm going to just focus on the inside and work my way out. So I'm just going to start in here. And grayscale really comes in, like if you look at tattoos, there's some really great tattoos done just with grayscale. So I'll add my black, try to get the side, and then just blend in half in and half out. And what we're looking for is that contrast of color. And it's a good exercise because it allows you to go all the way from black to white. And this exercise can then take that into color. So if you take color and you're trying to get go super dark and super light with a whole color blend, uh, you start to get some nice effects. So I'm just going to put a little white on the edge and then blend that. And you can see how I just go back and forth with this. And I'm going to put the black in the center, this little guy. And there's going to be a little. So you got to look at your drawing and see where the darkest places are. And that's kind of easy to do um, when you're just thinking about, you know, this grayscale. Sometimes in colors, it's a little harder to do. But if you did this exercise with grayscale first, it would allow you to kind of identify those dark areas and then identify those super bright areas. And I'm not sure how many folks we have on, but... Um, we we have people coming from all over. We've got Matthew King from New York. He's the one who sent us a beautiful that beautiful chair with the flower of life yeah. on it. So I've been using that to play music in. I need to take a little uh, photo of me playing my guitar in that. It's great because I sit in it really nice. And um, that was so generous to, to send that. It's amazing. And, it looks so good in our gallery too. Yeah. And Cinnamon from New Zealand and Jim and Andrea from Salt Lake City. Kyla from San Jose, Dorian, Doreen from New Jersey, and then we've got Hugo Rock from Buenos Aires, La Boca. Yeah. So you can see this. So I started just the inside of this little rose. And, you know, you can just see how, you know, it's a little bit less intimidating when you're just using this color scheme. And pulling the paint around and you're just trying to get the contrast, kind of like when you're doing a pencil drawing. And I don't know if any of you have ever done like a pencil drawing and then use the eraser to erase places that, that make it uh, lighter. And that's your highlights is the erased, erased parts. Um, that's pretty fun exercise doing with pencil. But Posco, you know, just with these three colors is a really great uh, 
way to learn this, this shadowing and this contrast and these highlights. Um, hopefully our new camera angle is working pretty good. A question out there, type in the chat whether uh, the audio and the video is good. I know we were having some problems earlier. Yeah, Sometimes we that would be helpful. Thanks. Um, I also want to shout out to a few more people. Janet from New York City, and I think she's the one who won the paint pens last week. We've got Helen from Cambridge, UK. Wow, welcome, Helen. Katie Hoffman from Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Wow, I love Steamboat. I know, I love it there too. We were just there. Marilyn yeah. from Florida. So, you know, you can see as I'm painting how I'm doing this. So, you know, you might want to practice on the side of your, of your paper, just do maybe some black and then gray and see how I blend that gray pen out. Is that coming through? I'm at the bottom of my page here. And then white. And you know that that in itself is a fun exercise, just get make getting that blend down between these three colors. But I'm doing it on the rose already. And you can use this with any drawing or you know, any sketch that you do, like if you were doing a painting and then use this grayscale, you can still create amazing art. Um, I was quite pleased with this uh, little painting I did over here. Uh, it was a little ambitious for the size of the canvas. And when it came out now, and, and I really got into it, now I could have taken this further too, and you know, done more stippling and more stippling and actually then get this 1MR white and do more stippling the other way. And you could really lose yourself in one of these paintings. And um, it's, it, it was so much fun. So let's just knock out this rose real quick so we can move on to the skull. We've got Dubs join us. And I have to say Dubs does a lot of really awesome black and white paintings with Poskas. When you yeah. say Drew, he's he's a big inspiration for today's theme. Yeah, Dub, Dubs always does great work, and you know I've seen him just use black and gray, and you know he's kind of mastered the blending technique. So the blending technique is is the same with this black and gray. It's just it allows you not to have to think about color. So you're more focused on these contrasts, which ultimately will make your, your color paintings better uh, because you're, you're kind of learning how to pop these things and bring attention to certain things that you want to. So it's not so uh, flat. You know, if everything's kind of monotone colors, um, it just doesn't have the same three dimension to it as when you start getting this grayscale. Cause this really kind of looks like it's coming out of the center of this thing. And that's how you do it, is that, that sharp contrast. Everybody confirms that the audio and video is good now. Oh, good. Thanks it for must that feedback, good. everybody. And um, we have a lot of familiar names on here. And if I didn't shout out to you, it's just, I, we're thinking about you. I just can't say all the names. Callie said, I use my Posca so much, my 1.3 millimeter black is dried out. Got to get a new one. We have them. <laughs> well, I think the black is probably the most commonly used Posca, right? Black and white? Yeah, black for sure. So you can see I'm kind of going faster now, and I could paint a lot faster than this. I'm trying to go a little slower so everybody can kind of see. But I'll keep looking for the place that's going to be the most shadow. So this is like up underneath this, this petal. And that way, automatically, I know I don't have to worry about this area. It's going to be the most shadow. And I could have started out kind of filling in all those areas first. And I'm going to kind of do, show you how to do that on this skull once I get over to it. But 
But you see this, this doesn't take very long as I'm working on this little rose. And this isn't even the detail work. This is just kind of the quick, you know, color painting or black and it's black and white, but you know, filling in and it's allowed me to add the, make it uh, have form and give it that dimension that it needs. And then I can modify it from there or detail it depending on how much I want to. And you can see how, you know, I have the shadows in there and then pop anywhere I want to come forward with this white. Here's somebody in there typing. So Cinnamon said, I've never used Posca paints before. They're hard to find in New Zealand and they're pricey. And I would just like to say that, um, yeah, some, some places they are hard to find, but you can always order them online. You can order them from us, brophyartacademy.com. And uh, there's probably a lot of, lot of other options out there. But the other thing I wanted to mention is they last a really long time. So even if they seem to cost a little more than others, it's absolutely worth it. Super quality, premium paint pen. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I've used them for so long is, you know, I've had a lot of paint pens. They just seem to dry out faster. Um, that's one of the biggest problems with all pens. Um, but it, that also is user error sometimes that somebody, if you leave the tips off of them, uh, they'll tend to dry out. And that's pretty much any paint pen. Uh, secret is that you can, you know, bring that tip back to life because the ink's still good inside. Um, or the paint, I should say. Uh, what you do with the tip is you take it out and you could soak it in uh, like window cleaner and you know let it strain through and dissolve that hardened paint and then uh, rinse it off really good and start it all over again. So it's a little bit of work, but you can save those tips if they dry out, if you accidentally leave them. So there's my rose kind of going and you can see I have like these leaves that are kind of going to come off of here and some thorns. So I'm, I have this whole little scene here and this just gives you an idea of what we're talking about. So now I'm going to switch over to this skull and I, I picked a skull mainly because of these dark areas. You know, there's lots of dark, and then I'm going to show you how I can kind of make these areas look round. And um, so I'm going to start out with this big black. This is uh, the big um, uh, 8K. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in these areas that are going to be black. I know they're going to be black. They're deep in there. And this allows me to kind of move quickly around my, uh, my little idea here. And this is almost like color sketching, you know, with paints. I look at a lot of the paintings that I do like that. Um, this is going to be dark under here. I know that. I know there's going to be some dark here, maybe here, maybe here, around there. So everywhere where I think it's going to be dark, uh, I'm using this big marker. Now I'm kind of going around the rows because I kind of want to make it kind of come around here. I know it's going to be there, 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 maybe there. So, but if you're looking at like, let's say you're drawing a bowl of fruit or something like that, you could definitely do this and identify these, these places that are definitely going to be dark and uh, or the darkest. And then I can go from there and I'm going to, I'm going to start up here so I don't smear my paint. And um, I have a little, I have a whole nother little thing going on up here if we get to it. So I'm going to let me get this. Sorry, folks. I'm, uh, as I see things, I'm just throwing it in there. All right. So that's the, kind of like the top of his uh, head there. Now what I'm going to do, just like I do with the, uh, when I'm color blending, which is, is still color blending, it's just, you know, black, white, and gray. Um, start with this darker color. And this big broad areas have dried already, so I want to add a little bit more black. Switch to the gray. Let it blend. 
just like I did the rows, so far I'm doing bigger areas. Something like that. Now I'm gonna do these guys here. I'm trying to get my hand so it's not blocking. Sorry if it is. Almost, there we go. Same thing, black, then half in, half out with the gray. And you see how I'm using this stroke, which is a curved stroke, to try to make this look like the brow line of the skull and making it kind of rounded. Now I wanted a little bit more black in there, so I'm gonna do that. You can go back and forth until it dries to get it just right. It's really he hot here in Southern California today, so the paint's drying almost instantly, which makes it a little bit harder. Or I should say a lot harder if you're just starting, but I can deal with it. So Camille said you used Sharpie paint pens for a while too, didn't you, Drew? How did those compare to pasta? Um, yeah, so back uh, many years ago, you really couldn't get Posca at all in the United States. And there was a reason for that. And um, Sharpie started importing pens that were very similar to Posca. And uh, the, I liked them. They did dry out a little bit faster and the colors weren't as good. Um, I'm not sure why the, that's one of the problems is, you know, the cut, if you get colors that don't really go together, you can't do these blends without getting mud. And so that was one of the reasons I've always liked Posca best is just the colors themselves uh, blend so well together and just allow you to get these nice blends. It's kind of created my whole color palette and I know how to get certain colors out of those blends. Um, but, you know, whatever you can get, you know, the, it, whatever art materials that you have, um, you make the most of them, you kind of figure them out. Uh, the Posca pens are uh, just so amazing for so many different uses. Uh, we have Halloween coming up and over the years I've made many Halloween costumes using Posca and we'll be doing some Halloween themed uh, paint parties. Yeah, I guess this three weeks we're gonna do, I know we weren't really planning on today being any Halloween thing, but you did, you're doing a skull. But the next few, few weeks, every week, we're gonna have a Halloween themed paint party. Yeah. And I'm mainly doing a skull because, um, you know, I was heavily influenced by tattoo art. And a lot of the tattoo art, uh, especially early days was, uh, was black and gray. And it looks amazing. Uh, there's just something about uh, just trying, like I was really good at pencil drawing and this is kind of like my next step of pencil drawing. Uh, I didn't have any art training, so, you know, I was just figuring it out on my own. And this was the, like the least intimidating type of exercise I could do. Um, before I really started learning how to blend all the colors and making it look good. You know, just color theory in general is, you know, what color should I pick? What's it going to look like? I got really good at imagining ahead of time what my painting was going to look like um, with certain colors I, I, before I would do it. So you can see how this is starting to look round. I'm using that, um, that flow of the pen or that stroke mark to kind of curve it around. And this is just the beginning. So just like all my paintings, I'm going to come back when we, we get this all colored in and I'm going to do the black line to make it pop. And then I'm going to add super hot white highlights uh, to really set off the highlights. And it's going to allow me to really make this look 3D and have a lot of nice contrast to it and, um, you know, make it the best painting it can be. We have any more questions out there while we're going? Um, we have a couple of people that want to share, Dubs and Callie. So why don't we go to Dubs and then Callie, and then we'll come back to you, Drew. Is that good? Yeah. 
Okay, all right, Dubs, we're coming to you first. If you can unmute yourself and have your stuff ready to show. Hey there. Hey, hey Dubs. What's up, guys? Hey, hey look at his. Don't judge, don't judge me. <laughs> no. It looks good, man. That's awesome. Yeah, first grayscale, so. It's yeah, white, so, white. so like right around the sun, is like the area I like the most, Dubs, is it really, it has that, you know, that contrast where you could, it's popping. Yeah. You could probably bring that out more. I, I probably could have brought it out more in mine too. Um, right. But what's neat about it is like inside that door, you could probably make it super dark in there and have some really dark, dark areas and really light, light areas. Right, cool, cool. But I would... I would encourage you to add to it and try to add like big areas of dark and then work it back and forth with the black and white pens. Right, right. Cool. Looking man. good, man. I miss you. Did you see those big waves that y'all got last week? Oh, yeah, man. I was beach cleaning up and surfing, skimming. Skimming and. Yeah. Well, cool, man. It's good fun. to see you. Yeah, man. All right. Much love right. to you guys. Thanks. Yeah, see you. Um, <laughs> Doves is my good my good buddy. He lives in Florida. We don't get to see each other often enough. We see him almost every week on Zoom, which is so cool. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna go to Callie. Kaylee, Callie, Brooke. Tell me how to say your name properly. Here we come. Hi there. Hey. Hello. Hello. How's it going? You got your painting started? Yeah, I haven't done the grayscale yet because I came kind of late, but I'm painting on a box. Oh, good. A plastic box. The, the pens work good on that, huh? Yeah. And yeah. I also started painting a bunch of Mandela's. Oh, those are good. So you look like you're having fun with the Mandela's, huh? Yeah. Wow. I like the swirly one. Thank you. Yeah. Did you do yeah. most of that after our last mandala class? I did one during it, then I did a bunch after. That's amazing how you got inspired and you just kept going. I love yeah. that. Thank you for sharing. That's really inspiring to me. Yeah, and, th and that's what you know. we really wanted to do is be inspiring to people and give everyone you know, some projects that they could work on at home. And um, it seems to be working, so we're going to keep trying to come up with cool things and show you cool things. You can see my, my little skulls coming along. And folks, I'm really, you know, trying to do this um, simply and, and not, you know, give yourself some uh, leeway just to have fun. That's what I'm trying to do. And, and try not to try so hard and just trying to get like a, you know, play with it. I want you to play with your, your painting or your drawing. And when you're having fun, you're, that's when your best work is created. If you're trying so hard, it's just it kind of gets a little weird. Try to try so hard. Try not to try so hard. Try not to try so hard. All right. Get in the we flow. Love would love to get some more people to share. So just let us know, either hit the raise hand button or type it in the chat. Oh, Cinnamon wants to share. Okay, so we're gonna go to Cinnamon next. And if anybody else wants to share, let us know. All right, Cinnamon, we're going all the way to New Zealand right now. All right. And um, let's see, here we go. Hi. Hey, hey Cinnamon. Hi. Um, so every Halloween, I try and draw a new Halloween character. So I've done a pumpkin this year wearing a skeleton suit. Oh, that's cool. Love it. All in grayscale. Yeah, so I've never actually colored it in before. It's just, yeah. I usually leave them black and white. Well, now, so maybe in the next next couple of paint parties, we'll be doing some more Halloween stuff. You'll have to do like a whole series of them, some in color. That'd be good. It's so great that the internet connections like can get us all the way down to New Zealand and talk in real time. I love New Zealand. We've had so much fun there. 
I like her character. That was neat. Yeah. All right, Thanks. so you can see see where I'm at and, and how that dark really kind of recedes in space and these guys are kind of popping. So I'm just going to keep going as we talk. And, um, you know, for inspiration, you guys can look up uh, grayscale tattoos and do you see some of the amazing uh, work that's been done with grayscale? Um, here we go. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to get this camera sideways so it can see me like from a side angle. So that, that way we're always trying something new over here to, so people can see better. Maybe we need a third camera over here. Or a close up close up. So what's gonna be neat is as I, I'm gonna put another rose here this is going to be black, black right there. So this skull, you'll be able to see that it's in front of that rose. And that's the type of, you know, tricks and, and things that you can practice that really makes your pieces come alive. And kind of like uh, looking at Dubs, like Dubs' ideas and everything were really good. And, you know, he pulled it off around the sun, but you need to get more black, black areas and more white, white areas. And all of a sudden, you realize that that's how you make things come forward and fall back. All right, this is coming along. And really, the sometimes when um, I try not to get any white, white, you see how mine's all kind of gray? Because I'm going to come back and add white, white to pop it. Um, so I'm actually blending this white into like a really light gray. What is, are you painting on paper or poster or what is that? So this is a coated paper that's on, it's a back of a poster basically. And I'm doing that oh, cool. just because, you know, for these paint parties, we're doing lots of ideas and um, I don't want to paint everything on canvas. But the pens work great on this coated paper. If you don't have coated paper, you could put some uh, uh, spray on it, uh, any type of sealer, and that could will help you uh, it not wick and tear up the paper. Works really good on uh, wood, of course. If anybody has any ideas for us for what you would want to do for Halloween themed paint parties, put it in the chat. I would, we, we have a lot of ideas, but we'd love to hear what you want to do. There's so many possibilities. Kelly says pumpkins and skulls. Yeah, so I think uh, pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns are going to be really fun. Um, similar to like what Cinnamon was doing. So maybe we'll do some uh, cool jack-o'-lanterns and we'll do those in color so we, that we can make them look like they're lit up. Definitely do some skulls and things like that for Halloween. Um, maybe something like the Day of the Dead, which is cool. You know, and I'll talk a little bit of story about Halloween, that I, things that I know, um, where it came from and, and some of the reasons we do things. Um, which is pretty cool. It comes out of some of my studies on solar physics. That uh, pretty neat stuff. And then um, sugar skulls. Camille said, "Blend Halloween with the ocean," which I love that idea. It kind of goes with the idea that I got when I was googling like Halloween art, and I saw these um, Halloween uh, landscapes. Sort of, it was like a sunset so the sky's all orange and then there's like a witch flying in the air and you know zombies on land like that would be kind of fun yeah big full moon yeah exactly yeah sugar skulls we've got a few people saying yes to sugar skulls <laughs> sugar skulls <laughs> sugar skulls are cool black cats and candy corn Ooh, Jenny. black bat. Oh, bats? Bats would be good. Bats and cats. Bats and cats. 
Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Janet said. Oh, yeah. So you can see that uh, we're going to have some fun the next couple of weeks. My favorite thing about Halloween was making my kids Halloween costumes and carving jack-o'-lanterns. You know, what a great time, you know, for the artist and the family to shine. Uh, I made jack-o'-lanterns for my family as a kid every year. Uh, nobody else was really into it. And I'd like draw, do these like really cool, intricate ones. And, um, and then I started drawing them or painting them sometimes. And, you know, I, I like to think that some of the skulls that I do actually came from uh, some of my Jack Lantern ideas and also uh, tiki's. So I started drawing tiki's and they were kind of with these faces that remind me of my Jack Lanterns that I'd created. So you can see my skull has really shaped up and I've only used these three pens, these three colors. And um, it just really allows you to settle into this, this uh, process of lights and darks and kind of lets you off the hook of having to think about what color to use next. And it's just a great exercise. You start to see like how you, how you can blend these things together and get a nice even blend going into a super harsh contrast. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna do these teeth. Let's see. So we've got Rocco that wants to share what he's working on and apparently he lives in a place called Sleepy Hollow. Oh, wow, let's, Virginia, let's go to Rocco. West Virginia. Um, and if anybody else wants to share also just put a, put it in the chat or raise your hand. Rocco, we're going to come over to you. I'm asking you to unmute. So unmute yourself and we're going to spotlight you. There we go. You outside? Uh, Rocco's outside. What's up, brother? Hey, hey, uh, you know me, I have enough energy. I made the last couple of videos. I'm not painting right now, so I just... Yeah. It looks beautiful. We can barely hear you, but we can see you. Well, then, uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, we hear can me? hear you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm showing you the full moon. Uh, I'm up here on the mountaintop and uh, checking you out and just chilling. So I'll let you get back to your business. And uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it, loving it. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. And uh, I just want to show you all beautiful views of uh, West Virginia here. So, uh, right on. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, man, that is. <laughs> thanks, okay, man, thanks. Yeah, that's beautiful. So, the, you know, it, it brings up a neat point, you know, just seeing where he's at is, you know, being inspired by nature. Um, I always, always get asked the question where my inspiration comes from. And really, it's moments like that. You know, he's up on that mountain and he's looking at the sky and probably the first star coming out and you know, that's where all the great ideas get born, especially at sunset when you like see all the colors start popping and, you know, it's hard to duplicate that stuff and, and make it look good. And when you get it right, it sure is amazing. So thanks for sharing. All right, I've blown through these teeth and you can see how these are all kind of dark. Um, so that when I come back and add the the white highlights, they're going to lighten up really good. So is everybody Hopefully following everybody. along? I mean, it, I'd love to get some feedback if you're paying along and if this is really helpful to you, if there's anything that Drew showed, showed you so far that's um, kind of opened you up to something new, please share in the chat just so we know if we're on the right track or if there's anything that he you'd like him to talk about. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you real quick now. So I got this piece going and now I can use this big black, this big 8K again to fill in some areas that I know that are gonna be super dark. And so this area right here around the um, uh, stem of this rose is gonna be dark. And then there's another rose coming here. So I can just imply this and go ahead and make these areas dark so that I don't have to worry about it anymore. 
And this is kind of what I mean by being able to utilize this um, in a, so that it, it just gets you, you moving quicker and get your brain thinking about dark and light. So the darkest, darkest area and the lightest, lightest area. And then you fill in in between. But also what's cool about this is, you know, in a colored painting, you'd have to give a lot more thought to what is this? Is this dark brown? Is it purple or whatever? And with the grayscale, it just allows you to fill it in. Now, if you did this grayscale painting and then said, okay, I want to do a color painting of the same thing, it would probably be a lot easier once you kind of established your dark, dark areas. Um, same with here. This is kind of like a big shadow underneath and I can kind of see this and I can kind of go like that. And then the same in the front, there's going to be a rose up here and I want to make sure that this gets popped off of there really well. So it's in front. So kind of like that. So you see how he kind of looks like he's coming out of the shadows now. Um, I, want, I want to do a quick thing. These are bubbles down here. And these bubbles, this is just kind of going into the blending technique. Uh, many of you see me do bubbles, but I do little half moons with the darkest color, let's say. Kind of like that. And get the blend half in, half out. Go around kind of like this. And so this is a great um, way to kind of do the blends and get it, and try to get it round. Then you kind of use the, the lightest pen, the white, to fill it in on top. Something like that. And then so when I black line around it and then add the white highlights, it, it will really come forward. All right, so I'm going to do this one. For anybody who loves to pencil sketch, this is like a nat another natural step. Um, my drawings are actually better than my paintings. I haven't learned to paint as good as I can draw, but uh, I'm getting there. The dr drawing is just the f at the fundamentals of all great art. And uh, I love just sitting around sketching in my sketchbook and, uh, coming up with ideas. And a lot of them are really quick. You know, they're just like little quick, little concept drawings. Um, but they have the attitude and the flair and the spon spontaneousness in them that really make for great paintings. And then kind of the next sketch or step for that is kind of doing like a quick, like a uh, sample painting or, or you know, Sometimes I'll do a little eight by 10 of an idea to try to work out the kinks of whatever it is that I really want to create. All right, so this is going to be another rose. Same thing, I started with the center and I'm going to blend it out. I think the best thing about the Posca pens too to bring this up is you can kind of paint anywhere. Like if I was using brushes right now, um, you know, it's a little bit messier. It's a, it takes a little bit of a setup. Um, you could do, you could do this anywhere. You could take these, you know, just a set of black and white and gray, and you know, just go fill up a couple little canvases while you're sitting at the beach or at the park or something like this. And I think that's the what was great for me, because I was painting on beaches all over the world. Uh, but I was painting surfboards with Posca pens. Sometimes I'd be painting signs for people. I would, I would need money and I would tell people, well, you know, how about I paint you a sign? Uh, I painted store windows with Poscas. That, that's another great way, uh, another great thing that you can do. Uh, especially around Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. That's a, a big demand. So if you're looking to make some extra money, dubs, you could be painting some windows. I know you still work at Michael's. You should have them paying you to paint windows. Um, locally here, we have Trader Joe's. People use Poscas to do all the art in Trader Joe's, doing fruit and you know specials on things. Posca 
Halloween costumes, I'll tell you, they, these things work great for a quick Halloween costume. Face painting, use Posca's to paint on your face, which is pretty fun. One time I drew tattoos all over my arms uh, for Halloween. I went in as the tattooed man. Remember that, Maria? That was pretty cool. And I think Longnecker painted a bunch of stuff on me one time at one of the trade shows and people didn't realize that it wasn't real. The guy in the elevator said, nice tattoos, man. I was like, yeah, thanks, bro. My friend had painted them on me. Janet said, my drawings are always better than my paintings too. I'm just going to read through some of the comments. Nancy yeah, please. Nancy said, grayscale has always been difficult for me. I will be trying the Pascas on fabric tomorrow. Oh, that would be good. This is a great lesson for inspiration. Thank you again for the Pascas. Love your paint parties. Thank you, Nancy. Nancy, Nancy's been with us, gosh, I don't know, maybe almost every single paint party or at least a lot of them. Camille said, draw on the beach and you will have no sense of time. Yeah, then, that's true. Yeah. And then she asked, do the pens wash off faces easily? Um, it, it'll wash off with soap and water. You know, you definitely have to rub it. Um, but I had a girl told me that it came off really good with, uh, what was it, baby oil. It came, she said it would come right off. So I'm going to try that next time I paint on something so you see my piece coming together now that we're kind of anybody else want to share please do i'm going to keep going yeah. so i have a, a whole of scene a shy of a crowd today a little bit of a shy crowd i mean i i would love to see a couple more even if you're only part way through share with us anyway yeah so I'm going to show you what I have up here. So I did a really loose sketch before class and I got a dragon. I love drawing dragons. And if any of y'all saw the dragon surfboard painting on my Instagram, uh, that got like 60,000 views on lost surfboards, uh, Instagram. So I think people like dragons. Or it wasn't that one. The dragon didn't get 60. It, that was the Misfits board, which that's a pretty good Halloween board. You see my dragon? So our close-up shot doesn't get as much as my painting as I'd want. It's always something. But there again, I'm just kind of loosely going over this. So it's almost like there's a dragon on top of the skull's head. We have just a little more than 10 minutes left and I wanna invite everybody to ask questions, share comments, um, and of course, let us know if you wanna be spotlighted and we'll show what you're working on. Okay, that's tongue there. <laughs> I just love how this just kind of comes out. But this is what I was talking about, about having fun. Let's see if we can get this stuff going. Is it here? Got another rose over here. And this is really inspired by some of the sleeve black and white tattoo art that I've seen. I have lots of friends that are tattoo artists that do some amazing work. But you know, one of the things that's, that's really cool is to build a composition similar to this that just kind of goes together. Like, you know, you'll see somebody's tattoos are on their arms and it's just like a, you know, a bunch of different stuff. And, and the tattoo artist is really able to uh, blend it all together and make it wrap and, and go together. And that's kind of uh, the trick, you know, with all art, but uh, mainly with uh, surfboards, you know, you have to complement the shape. So with tattoos, you got to complement the the body in the shape of the body, which a lot of people don't realize. You know, if you just pop something on there, it doesn't look that great. Um, so hats off go to a lot of those tattoo artists that um, make such beautiful art on people's bodies. Um, 
here we go. All right, there's my little sketches. So I got some bubbles here. Now I'm going to do that. Go ahead. Uh, that's okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll ask you in a minute. Okay, so now I'm doing that same thing of putting in all the darkest areas. So this is, a, this is an important part of the process of being able to break down your idea so that you know where, where the darkest darks are or what you want to pop off of here. So when I look at this sketch, I automatically look that I don't like uh, where this mouthpiece is. So I want to move this deeper into the mouth, maybe here, because it's going to be dark, dark. And then I know this is going to be dark. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling these things in. So this is good. You can uh, adjust your sketch. Yeah, I just adjusted it there. It looks messy right there, but as I paint, I'll get rid of that. So I definitely want to go around this um, rose. So I'm going to block this off. And this is going to be some, um, some other like little bubbles. This is part of the skull still. Let that kind of go. And I know I want to kind of pop this flower off. Something like that. And what this does is just kind of prepares your mind for what's coming and what it needs to focus on. So that kind of separates all that kind of stuff. And then I'm like looking right here. This is going to be the deep inside of the dragon's mouth. And so I want it really dark there. Um, right by his eyes, I want it dark. I'm just going around, just like kind of just assessing what's what's going to be dark all up under here. That's going to be a dark line. And so I'm just deciding kind of where everything is. A lot of times I call it weighting it. So I weight everything. Like if I put a dark line over there, it almost adds weight to it. So like think of it being heavier here and lighter there. And um, when I say weighted, it's like it allows it to pop off the page and, and almost like it has density to it. It's pretty neat. And then right here, this is his, like the back of his jaw. And these are, of course, are going to be scales. So that's pretty good. We might have some, um, some other things. Here's some nostrils there. So that's kind of how I do that. And then I can also do this. I can imagine his other teeth on the other side of his jaw being there. And then these things. So this is really allowing me to, to cover some ground here and, and understand where everything is. All right. Something like that. It's amazing we painted this in this whole this little short time. Well, I start. Camille wanted to know if we have grayscale works on display at our gallery right now. We, and actually, we say not many. Not really. No, we don't. No, yeah, you know, I, I haven't done any of these in a while, uh, and I, that's I, you know I really look at this as a good uh, training tool for everyone. Uh, not just to get working with the Poscas, but really understanding what makes really good art and being able to understand this, this idea of, you know, getting the, the contrast right. And when you get that, it really helps all of your art. So this pen's a little watery. Rocco said you would make a great tattoo artist. And Doreen said, thank you for talking about composition and waiting. Yeah. And I was going to see, Drew, if you want me to just, uh, we only have a couple minutes left. And I was thinking it might be kind of interesting if as I walk from my office to where you are, I could kind of yeah. show people our gallery. Sure. If everybody's interested in that, well, let me figure out how to do that from my phone. So... It'll take me a second, but now that, yeah, I just think it'd be kind of fun for people to be able to see where we are. All right, I'm gonna do that in just a sec. And yeah, so we do have a- Yeah, totally, in the comments, everybody's like stoked on that. Okay, 
Cool. I'm going to do that in yeah. just a second, you guys. Yeah, and you can show them what, where I work. In, the, in our studio and gallery is a working studio. I'm here working every day. Um, that's why I was so exhausted last week. I, you know, we started working on the weekends and trying to take Monday, Tuesdays off. And I ended up working all weekend and then working Monday, Tuesday. And uh, Wednesday came around, I was shot. <laughs> so even when you do art for a living, it's too much sometimes. You gotta take a break and get re-inspired. It's a big part of the process. You see I'm doing these flames up here. Not, they're not really flames, it's almost like the top of his nose, the flare. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, so you can see. But I think also the great thing is, is by wa watching this unfold, that you can really see that there's uh, a simple way to do this. And once you get the hang of it, uh, you can kind of see anybody could do this. And especially with the, the idea of, of cutting yourself some slack and have fun and just let it kind of morph into something. And maybe you'll get, you know, some funny little painting that is not that great, or maybe you'll come up with something amazing. Uh, but either way, you'll learn something amazing, which is, you know, by playing with it, you understand how to get these, these contrasts and, and diversity, you know, of, of, you know, the comp, not just the composition, but, you know, breaking up that space, that positive and negative space. And it took me a long time to master this. Uh-oh, here comes Maria. That's her office. And I hear, so hopefully everybody can still hear me. And uh, she's figuring out her camera. I don't know if she's uh, realizes she has control, but I'll keep talking so everybody can uh, keep up. And I'm just going to keep painting too. There's our gallery there. And so you can see a lot of the paintings. I'm not sure why we can't hear. Um, and these are all created for different projects. Um, the geometry paintings were created for some uh, special events. And uh, those two long paintings were created for yoga mats. There's an album cover. Um, there's the vector equilibrium. There's the Rick Griffin board in our gallery, which is an amazing board. Uh, there's our um, paintings I did for Mother Earth. Ah, that's uh, Hillary's work in the wood, Some friend, a friend of ours. She has some pieces in our gallery. There's our outside and um, more paintings. There's the, all the Posca pens. I always dreamed of having a big thing of Posca pens. And so now I got more Posca pens than anyone. And people in San Clemente buy the pens to paint boards and do art. Here I am. There I am. <laughs> There, you can find here. So show, show them the studio right there. We're oh, on my other side. So magic happen? these are all things I'm working on. Show, show them the surfboard. Point it to the surfboard. That surfboard is what I was working on today. Um, it's almost finished. And then these are all pieces and things that I'm working on every day. And... Um, and then the room across is where we film the show. And here she comes. There I go, Mel. There we go. It's a little tricky with this palm, so. There we go. Sorry about the imperfect camera action here, but we will. Okay. That was good. Look at that, I did it. So hopefully everybody enjoyed that. Yeah, I hope you all like that. Um, it's our way of bringing you into our space, even though you can't really be here in the flesh, you were kind of here. Yeah. And I'm, uh, 
if we can go back to this uh, real quick, I think we're wrapping it up. We are wrapping it up. Wrapping you, it. you want me to show your hand real quick? Yeah, show, just show where I'm at with this. Okay. And this has been really fun for me uh, just to play with this. This is a great exercise for myself. So I encourage uh, all of you, maybe pick a rose or pick something that you want to paint and practice getting that dark, dark and light, light. And um, it will make your paintings better. It'll allow you to, uh, you know, make things come forward and fall back. You know, you think about the foreground being darker than the, the background. Um, that's kind of what I was doing on this piece here, you know, making the waves kind of dark and really trying to make that night sky the opposite, you know, kind of like, like, you know, kind of like halfway lit up. If you kind of know what like that full moon sky looks like. And um, so, you know, it, it's playing with it and having fun and trying new things. And uh, hopefully this helps you uh, with all your paintings. So hope everybody enjoyed that. Yeah, I hope you had a good time, everybody. And of course, one of you are gonna win this and we'll announce it on Instagram. And we also announce it in our newsletters and we ship it out as soon as we get your address. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Posca, they're the ones who allow us to give these away, and so we appreciate that. Yeah, and so everybody get excited about Halloween, and we'll be doing some jack lanterns, some really cool skulls. I'll have some different ones to show you. Um, some sunsets with uh, maybe like witches and some cool things like that, and um, really some ideas just to kind of Halloween up anything so um and one last thing please tell your friends we'd love to get more people onto these paint parties the more the merrier it's so much fun yeah. so let people know yeah. all right thanks you all Bye.